In this video, I'm going to talk about Hikidate Geiko, a way of practicing that high-ranking members of the dojo should become familiar with. The literal translation of Hikidate is to pull up, or to pull up to stand. There are a lot of figurative meanings, but the one most pertinent to Kendo is to encourage someone, or to raise their spirit. Hikidate Keiko refers to the kind of sparring that a senpai or sensei does with someone of a low rank with the aim of pulling that person's kendo up to a high level. As you grow higher in rank, the more you'll be expected to do jigeiko with your kohai, a student of a junior rank. If you're lucky enough to have a lot of senior students in your dojo, then it's easy to get used to being a perpetual kohai. But as you progress in rank, you have to train to become a good senpai. This doesn't happen overnight, and it doesn't happen automatically just because you've attained a certain rank. As you do more chigeiko with your kohai, you'll encounter a wide range of abilities. From a beginner who has just put on their bogu, to a kohai who may be a competitive player and could potentially win against you in a tournament situation. The wider the gap in ability between yourself and your kohai, the more important it is to do hikidate geiko. Doing chigeiko in a way mostly to satisfy your own ego, for example crushing a kohai who has much less experience than you, is not only dispiriting for the kohai, but it's a waste of time for both of you. Neither side learns very much from this kind of keiko. Ideally, you want to do chigeiko as though you're about half a dan higher than your kohai. This is quite tricky. From a technical standpoint, you have to figure out your kohai's strengths and weaknesses and adjust accordingly. From a mental standpoint, many senpai have a hard time letting go of their ego. You should be doing jigeiko in a way that over time teaches a kohai important elements of kendo, such as distance, center, pressure, and hitting opportunities, as well as good spirit. On the flip side, you shouldn't do chigeko with a kohai in a half-hearted way, as if it's beneath you to play that person. Not only is this very rude, but it's also a missed opportunity for you to work on your own fundamentals. In many ways, hikidate geiko is linked to a concept known as katsujinken, the life-giving sword, where the sword is not an instrument of killing, but a life-affirming tool. There's also a nuanced martial interpretation of katsujinken, but maybe I'll deal with that in a separate video. If you want some reading material about the proper way to do jigeiko at various ranks and with various types of opponents, a wonderful resource is an article that Sotaro Honda Sensei wrote for the British Kendo Association called Attitudes to Jigeiko. I'll put a link to that article in the description below. I highly recommend it. The unspoken requirement of hikidate geiko is that you as a senpai need to be proficient enough to be able to do hikidate geiko, so it forces you to up your game as well. The traditional way of doing chigeiko doesn't involve a lot of talking. You teach by example and by scoring ippon when your kohai reveals shortcomings. If you do give verbal instructions, it should be succinct, so as not to interrupt the flow of chigeiko. It's generally better not to fall back on verbal instruction as a crutch for pointing things out. Better to let your kendo do the talking. This is the rather austere sensibility of traditional kendo, but it's that way for a number of reasons. One reason is that too much talking without the ability to show by example breeds resentment among kohai. If you find that fewer kohai are lining up for you during chigeiko, then you might want to reflect on why that's happening. Another reason for this austere sensibility is that when the advice is given too easily, it robs the kohai of the opportunity to figure things out for themselves. That can often be a long and frustrating process. But you can be damn sure that a lesson learned the hard way won't easily be forgotten. If you are going to give verbal advice, better to do it after keiko, maybe even over a beer at second dojo. A good rule of thumb is not to give unsolicited advice to somebody who is closer than two dan ranks below you. That is, if I'm tandan, 
I would give unsolicited advice to somebody who is shodan, but not to somebody who is nidan. The reason is that when you're too close in rank, it's hard to see the big picture. To put it simply, it's presumptuous of you to think that you know what your kohai needs. Even if you feel that you have some insight into what your kohai needs, it's sometimes better just to keep your opinion to yourself. Not only is that socially more prudent, but it's also in line with the circumspect culture of kendo. It's also because you often need to let the person figure it out on their own. Of course, this is not a hard and fast rule. It depends greatly on how well you know the person and on social factors such as whether your kohai is older than you. It's a mistake to think that you have nothing to learn from doing jigeko with your kohai and that it's just an obligation. A great inspiration for me has been the example of my own sensei, who was able to pass the notoriously difficult Hachidan exam despite having very few opportunities to practice with established Hachidan sensei. And I think that's partly because of his commitment to Hikidate Geiko. Even when I was a newbie, I got the sense that he was completely focused on the Chigeiko and that he took it seriously, and that continues to this day. I also learned from him the supreme importance of Shodachi, the first attack. If you approach Shodachi with the attitude that it is Shinken Shobu, that is a real duel, then you can't help but take every opponent seriously, no matter what their rank is. And ultimately, I think this is an important part of Hikidate Keiko.